Well, good evening, everyone. Here we are starting a little bit past 7.30. Yeah, that's what we normally do here. Whatever we say, like when we used to start at 8, it was the far side of 8 p.m. sharp. You know, 7.30, the far side of 7.30 p.m. sharp. That's it. So we're starting close enough. But that's just so we can make sure we get on YouTube and Facebook and all the channels that we have to do. Because we broadcast all our shows as often as we can. And we have as many shows as we can. And this being Friday the 13th. You know, I was just going to be one of those spinning vinyl nights where I was just going to be playing all of our record collection, which is, hey, that's pretty spectacular when you go through them, right? There's a lot of great stuff there over the years, the many things I've collected. But there was an opportunity when these guys got a hold of me. Now, this is, the neat thing is tonight, this is the Salty Lemon String Band, which is 
which is not necessarily, it's made up of a configuration of other bands, like people are in other places, and but there comes this winter thing happens, and you end up together, and you say, well, here's this nucleus of this other project that we want to do, because musicians have a lot of projects, like the lady at the very end, oh, she's got an Irish band she wants to bring over, there's all sorts of, like, there's a lot of people out there playing, they need a place to play. So it turned out that we were able to get a hold of them tonight and have them come over and do it. Now, it intrigues me because two reasons. I love New Orleans and I love that early style, that pre, uh, pre sort of war stuff, or that early jazz stuff that went on, which I hear you guys are doing and stuff like that, right? And also that Dr. Ted Cadillac and Trevor, our other guy involved with this, had the opportunity to go to Folk Alliance last year in New Orleans. Right, and hang out. And that's where you guys used to, we were doing some busking, right? That's how you got together. Well, there's a flavor down there that's just, it's just phenomenal. And according to these, I couldn't go. I have an agreement with the United States of America. I don't want to go there and he won't let me in. <laughs> yeah, something about possession of 11 joints of marijuana. Um, how many years ago? When I was 18. But I was charged with possession of a narcotic, and I served one hour in jail. So I served time for possession of narcotics. They don't let you into the States. Now, that's why I'm sort of glad they kind of changed the laws. Did you realize, by the way, not to get off on another subject, but <laughs> just recently we celebrated, what, two years of marijuana being legal? Two years or one year? I can't even remember how long I've been smoking for so long, I forgot. But the problem being is that when the night before I went to sleep, there were seven ways I was breaking the law by being a marijuana user, right? I woke up the next day, 40, 43 ways that I'm breaking the law, doing the same act that I did the day before, but now it's legalized. I think someone's pulling the wool over our eyes somehow. But anyway, that's... And, and with all this COVID thing, we got to, you know, everyone's questioning, everyone's questioning. But, you know, I just heard the numbers again today. So thank you for everyone that's here being careful and being conscious of what we're doing. We do go by COVID protocol for those that are watching. All the microphones are sanitized before we use them between each and every show. No one gets to use the same mic twice. With it. You know, it, we just don't want that. We don't need that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where that feedback's coming from. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll find it. I'll play with it. I'll just go around. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, what are some of the other things? Uh, yeah, that's what we do with the COVID. Is that we're trying to make sure that people have the opportunity to come and play and have a chance to perform. And tonight, Salty Lemon String Band brought some company. They had some guests. And this is wonderful because string bands and that whole concept, what they're about to do, first of all, an accordion. I love it. You know, wow. It's a string band with an accordion. <laughs> I know. That's the part that doesn't get me, but it's okay. It's not supposed to make sense. Life doesn't make sense. Life's like that, eh? Anyway, they got some songs. They're living on Salt Spring right now, aren't you? Yeah. We are, yeah, for the most part. For the, for most, the most, yeah, part. For the most part? For the most part. Well, thanks for coming over to here. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. It's, it's such a, you know, it's, it's only just a little, but it's such a long distance. Because yeah. you guys got a whole bunch of music things going on over there. <laughs> well, I guess it, it sounds like you do. No, it was, uh, the, 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 well, is the treehouse still going? Uh, no. Yeah. Winter weather. Yeah. Yeah. The music slows down because of that. Darn. Well, maybe they'll all come over here and do some shows. Maybe we'll get that Irish band over here. Yeah, maybe we'll have should. a whole bunch of fun going on. But right now, <laughs> it is the Salty Lemon String Band with their style of how they bring music to you, please. Take it away, guys. Have some fun. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's a Greek tune called Far and Distant Valleys. Yeah. That song was taught to me by a buddy of mine named Cole Gibson in Bellingham, Washington, some years ago. Hey, do you want to play uh, uh, Eli Green's Cakewalk with us while you're up here? Sure. Do you want to go Sure. Is that what we're going to do right now? You want to? Okay. Um, the great thing about making set lists is that you make them and then you play the first song and then you decide to not play any of the following songs that are on the set list. We're going to play a completely different song. So um, we play a lot of ragtime music, which was the popular music in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And there weren't a lot of um, female identifying composers back then. It was a, a largely male uh, dominated musical genre. And in 1896, there was a song published called Eli Green's Cakewalk. It was written by a woman named Sadie Krzynski. She was a Hungarian Jew who lived in Salem, Massachusetts. And this is how we play it. A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B. Yeah, each part twice. And the first A, the last bar, the first A is just a hit. Not just a G. Gonna try it. One, two, one, two, three,
Thank you very much. We had some uh, equipment malfunction in another song with the mandolin. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> yeah, you got it. So uh, this is a tune that's based off a lot of tunes. Uh, we learned it off a CD that Dana's friend gave us. It's a, it's a CD of classic American waltzes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 30 of, um, she's, she wrote it as some of the essential old time waltzes. <laughs> There's, yeah, <laughs> they're amazing tunes. And this is called Beautiful Ohio Waltz. It was written, um, I can't remember who the composer was, but it's based off a bunch of old tunes. It's based off of uh, Korsakoff's Song of India, which is like an amazing classical piece. It's based off of um, Stephen Foster's Beautiful Dreamer, it's an amazing classic American song, and an amazing parlor number that... Uh, uh, Gene Austin and um, John McCormack made really famous called Love's Old Sweet Song. Just an amalgamation of melodies. And then it became Ohio's state song. It's called Beautiful Ohio Waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three. Classic American song. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's do cool. it. Then you're welcome to stay up here if you want. And play this game. <laughs> good luck. Cool. Right <laughs> Didn't hear me say that. <laughs> um, um, do you want to tell them about this team? Yeah, yeah, this is um, a, a Klezmer Hora that was taught to me by my friend Becca, who plays amazing Klezmer fiddle um, and old time fiddle. There's an, an exceptional fiddler, and I uh, started playing fiddle and asked them to teach me some tunes, and, uh, and this was, was the first tune they sent to me. And uh, it's the only Hora that I know so far. That's going to change because I'm going to keep learning from them. Um, <laughs> do you want to bow? mistake and we forgot to put the third part of the chart on so <laughs> <laughs> happens what did I say let's go oh let's play some old time okay <laughs> do you want to play June Apple sure. sure this is what I mean about the we did write a set list I did I promise it's more of a guideline So, um, right, we're the Salt to Lemon String Band, and uh, so far that name has expanded from, from a duo to a trio to a quattro. We're just like Salty Lemons and you. <laughs> whoever, <laughs> whoever wants to be a Salty Lemon, you can join us. That's fine. Everyone's allowed in the Salty Lemon Club. 
Um, so we've, we've sort of expanded and contracted as um, folks have, have come through our circle. And uh, Jordan here is a lovely, lovely friend of ours that's been playing with us um, since July. And that's really wonderful. And Finn um, joined us also recently just busking on the street. And, uh, and it's all been really lovely. And, and because of that sort of gathering of folks, um, we play a lot of different styles of music. So, um, so we've played some, some Greek music and some American music, and that was um, klezmer music. And now this is um, some, some Americana or old time music, which is sort of the precursor to bluegrass. Um, and still a lot of old time songs are, are bluegrass songs um, that have been adapted from old time. So I need to tune this. Mm. We're tuning, so it's joke time. Um, Who wants to hear a joke? <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't offend anybody. How did grandma <laughs> fall in the well? Anybody? No, nobody? Because grandma didn't see you that well. <laughs> Are we doing old joke like and yeah. uh, and yeah, okay, okay. So this is a combination of songs. It's two of them. John Canson. Yeah. All right.
true love cry, take a little bad of me. Take a bad of me, Lord, take a bad of me. Every time my true love cry, take a little bad of me. time music and since I've met Dana uh, she's been teaching me how to how to play some of those tunes it's been really fun can we play on siblings We're lucky to be able to play a bunch of different instruments. So if you get bored of one, you can just pick up another. <laughs> yeah, it comes with the uh, the unfortunate aspect that you're not super great at any one of them. <laughs> oh yes, get that thing close in there. This is a Bo Carter song that Dana's gonna sing for you.
The French waltz. Yeah. Number one or number two? If Finn is in the house and they want to come play a fiddle on a waltz, they'd be encouraged. Let's play the second one. Is it? Uh, yeah, that one. Pass the European tunes. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi. Um, could I have less bass in the monitor, please? Oh, God. <laughs> That's great. Hey. <laughs> we have this. We're playing this one. When oh. we first came to uh, Vancouver, BC Island, this area <laughs> over here. It wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> we were in Kelowna. Is that what you were saying? Um, oh, were y'all talking about meeting? You say what you're gonna say. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. We met Finn in Kelowna. Separate <laughs> subject than I was talking about. What I was talking about was way less exciting. We bought a book, and there was music in it, and we learned a song, and this is one of the songs. Music. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's nothing like a pretty melody, and that song's got a pretty melody. Reminds me of uh, Cardi B. So we have something really exciting for y'all. Um, I can't see how many people are out there, so I'm gonna pretend like there's hundreds. Um, I play in a group, Dana and I both play in separate groups. Finn plays in a group, Jordan plays in many groups in Montreal, in New Orleans, so we're all like doing different things. And um, I play in a group in Texas, and we came out with an album right before the whole pandemic thing, and then, I came up here and it's, that's just a different world, it seems now. But we wrote a song and it's on the album. And it's about a flood that happened in Texas in 2015. And in my small town, it was the biggest flood that had ever happened. And it was really tragic. It was Memorial Day of 2015, so I don't know if you can remember where you were, but um, I remember where I was. I was in Oregon working on a marijuana farm and I got a call from my mother saying that it was raining a lot and she was really worried. And uh, it ended up taking the lives of like a good amount of people and, and ruining a lot of people's homes. It was really intense. And one of my bandmates, his house was pretty much destroyed in the flood. And one day we were hanging out after he had remodeled it like a year, year and a half later or so. And we were just like meshing around on instruments and this tune came up simple melody, simple chords, but it just uh, like embodied the flood and how he felt about the flood. And it was really emotional for him. So we decided to keep playing it. And then another friend of mine, who's an amazing poet and lyricist, his name's Colton Ort. You can see his name on the Cranky movie. Um, you can look him up on Bandcamp. He's incredible. He just came out with a new album and it's fantastic. He wrote lyrics to the song that lended itself really well to the flood-like theme. And um, fast forward time, I'm in Ontario with Dana, and we want to create art stuff, because we like to do that. And she had an idea to make a cranky movie. Do you want to tell them a little bit about us making the cranky movie? <laughs> I just, we, we were in my parents' backyard on a pile of uh, scrap wood <laughs> cutting out. Is that what you wanted me to share about? That's, that's what we did. We went to home hardware. <laughs> we got some Home stuff. hardware. <laughs> we got some screws. Um, yeah, yeah. And then we took it all apart and put it underneath the seats of my car and drove it across here. And then we put it back together. And uh, we took over the living room of our community house. And we cut out a bunch of stuff and we glued it all together. And now it's on a big scroll that Finn is going to masterfully turn before your very eyes and it will tell you the beautiful and tragic story that we're about to share with you. One, two, three, <laughs> one, it, two. Hold on, wait. What? Oh, chords, you want chords? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, we have charts, great. <laughs> it's a waltz. Can anyone guess what key the waltz is in? <laughs> Did someone say C minor? Wow, you, you actually you got it. <laughs> yeah, the bridge is in C minor, the A part's in E flat, the relative, you get, yeah, nice. If we had a CD, I'd give you a free one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us what page of the, the chord chart book it's in? Oh, I know exactly where it is. I took it out earlier and put it in the front pocket.
Every day I go walking down Spoke Hollow Road with blue bonnets blooming, the wind sweetly blowing through the cypress trees on the Blanco. I walk to the graveyard Lone true love does lay Cry I love you dearly I swear she can hear me I'll always remember the day When the great storm Cypress trees down The rain was falling The water was rising And love was nowhere to be found I 
We are going to take a short intermission. Yeah. That was our movie. Great. We're going to play you many more extremely wonderful tunes in just a few minutes. So don't go anywhere. Bye. <laughs> Somebody hit the house music because it's getting <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Tetris block, cleared away the puzzle, made my heartbeat drop. But this old game it feels just like brand new. Oh, honey, it's true. You're all I wanna do. The only thing I think about is you. We melt together like whiskey and ice. I get drunk off the look of your eyes. So let's stay up all night and dance like fools. Oh, honey, it's true You're all I wanna do The only thing I think about is you 
Seven billion people are sitting on this world. Three point five billion out of them are probably girls. So divide them by beauty and add a little love. Move the decimal and carry over to the answer every single time is you. Brighter than stars in the sky, pretty as the colors in the northern lights. I wanna be the man that's in your moon. Oh, oh, honey, it's true. You're all I wanna do. The only thing I dream about is you. I could feel it coming in the air tonight. I could push your buttons if I'm looking for a fight. I will play the song you picked the tune. Oh, oh, honey, it's true. All I wanna do. The only thing I think about is you. I know I just whistled a song. I gotta stop putting them back to back. Drying out my lips. Seven billion people are sitting on this world. Three point five billion out of them are probably girls. Oh, divide them by beauty and add a little love. Move the decimal and carry over. The answer every single time is you. You fell into my life like a Tetris block. Beat the high score, stop the clock. I know this game is sometimes cruel. Oh, honey, it's true. You're all I want to do. The only thing I think about cross my mind without a doubt. Day or night, I dream. About you. Thanks.
All right, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. I know there's people watching tonight because I was watching online too, just to make sure people were watching online. So that's pretty neat to know that there are people watching online tonight. Thank you for doing that. There is a way to donate. It's pretty easy. It's a little schedule on the bottom. Tim will put it up a little later. But one of the things that happens when you're out there and you're on the stream, in the break, you get to hear music that you're wondering, well, where's that from? It's all music that has been recorded from previous shows here before, live. And the last band you heard, I always like to bring this up, and I was talking to some people who were here tonight for the first time, and that is, if you're going north of Shimanus, on the right-hand side, there's a thing called the Porter Dairy Farm. Have you seen that? Yeah. Well, for some of the people, if you go up and down the aisle, you don't really sort of notice it. The police hang out there quite a bit, much to the... This, to the dismay of the, of the Porter family. But in there are three boys that are, were homeschooled, and they're all dairy farmers. And those, what you just heard was the song that they had recorded here. They've done, what, two and a half or three albums now? Two, uh, two and a half. Two and a half albums uh, worth of material. It's all original. And they were started coming here when they were 16, 14, and, and 12. And they're now... 19 and whatever and, and and working their way down great players great fun and uh and that's what the showroom is about we've watched those kids grow up we've helped them out and watched them just come to pieces right it's kind of neat i'm having a great time with what you guys are doing i love that style are you familiar with um blackberry wood 
out of Vancouver, Chris Wood. He's another guy who was, he likes to use a style of music that was pre-recorded music, yeah. before recording took him, when music had that ability to do, it had a different approach. Once we got into recording, it was no longer the artist deciding what was being played. It was someone who wanted to make money, so the whole sort of thought pattern changed, which is nice with some of the stuff you're doing, is that it's got that, it's, it's got that feel and that take of, you know, it's about the music. It's not about the money that makes it all happen. Thank you for what you're doing. And I'm sure there's a big collective on this too. I'm sure there's more other of, of this band around, isn't there? Yeah, well, thanks for bringing your guests along tonight. We're gonna get on to a second set, please. The Salty Lemon String Band. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna play an old time tune called The Blackest Crow while we wait for our bass player. And we're gonna play some different stuff.
Thank you. It's a sad, it's a sad one. Mm -hmm. Is our bass player here? Our bass player. Oh, hey. oh great. Yeah, there they are. You want to play some jazz? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Did you have one in mind? You want to play the bum, 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 yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to add on to um, what John was saying about um, music being about the music and I'm going to try to give myself a limited amount of time because I feel a lot of things about it so I, I think uh, I could ramble for a long while and so I'm going to be um, conscious of that because it's exciting stuff to me. And uh, and for me, I played a lot of old time music um, mainly, and, and old time um, has these African roots that are based a lot about these re um, repetitive sort of um, themes and, and notes and melodies and um, and the banjo has this fifth string because of its origins as an African instrument that drones over the entire song. So you kind of get rooted with that with that fifth string n note droning over the entire tune, and um, and it becomes trance music. It becomes this like transcendental ceremonial music that um, I think all music still has that quality to it, and. Um, as folk musicians, a lot of the music that we learn from each other is is exactly that. It's music that we've learned from each other, and it's music that we share. And I've spent many hours playing like one song. <laughs> you like play one song around a campfire, and you just keep finding more and more things to explore within it. And that's really, really incredible. And um, that's the wonderful tool of connection that music is: um, connection to ourselves and connection to others. And um, to the like earth that we walk on and and everything like that. That's how cool music is. So, um, and I also wanted to say that because of the current pandemic, this the the reality of being able to tour around and play music all the time for um, for people isn't necessarily. Uh, happening for us. And so we've been playing music a lot, or at least I've been playing music a lot for myself, um, and maybe less as much as I would like to, but still the amount that I do is this really amazing inward journey rather than um, continually playing for an audience. And um, that's been really magical too, to sort of recognize that, um, yeah, music isn't about the money ever. Music's never been about the money and it never will be. You know, we're doing it for ourselves and each other. G
Last time I played the clarinet was on Mardi Gras. So it's rough. <laughs> but I saw it in the case over there and I was like, I want to play. I want to play you. You're just alone in a glass case. I haven't been touched in like a week. Someone needs to put your mouth on. <laughs> So um, I'm from Texas. I grew up in Central Texas, in between San Antonio and Austin. Um, and I miss it every day. It's a wonderful place. This is a tune that is um, said to be the first blues tune ever recorded with the name blues on the record. Uh, there were tons of blues tunes recorded before that, but with the actual name Blues on the record. It's the first one. So I had 19, 1906 or something, 1905. People think that the first one was W.C. Handy's Memphis Blues, but that was the more popular one, and it was recorded two years later. It's called the Dallas Blues. Thank you. 
running round. I got the Dallas blues and the Main Street heart disease. It's running round, running round my brain like a little swarm of honeybees. Oh, Oh, do you want to, since I have my mandolin, you want to play, uh, um, Tom Patrick? Here's a tune that I learned from a Texas fiddler, uh, Benny Thomason. It's called the Cotton Patch Rag. Oh, it's a rag, and we have a sheet. String band rag time. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? Okay. Well, so, um, in the saga of things, we've, we've lost ourselves now. It's completely been. Uh, it, was fun, it was fun to have around because we could observe the songs that we neglected to play, but now we've just, we can't even <laughs> witness that, so. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, 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 hey. <laughs> okay, right here it is. <laughs> so, so we're definitely not gonna play these ones. These are not the songs that we wanna play tonight.
Do you want to play a default pick? Yeah. Yeah. Hand me that uh, their git star. A default pick. It's a one five, five one. Mm -hmm. Go. Pick it right up like a brand new pair of socks. Compilation albums of field recordings of 
of folks that um, would go up into the mountains and sort of record uh, folks playing on their their porches and stuff. And I forget the original recording, who it was that, that recorded it and who it was that was singing it. But um, I feel like that was probably the most polished version of that song ever. <laughs> 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 the original version, he's like so out of tune and he's just like wailing out to the mountains. It's really amazing. Um, but it's called The Dew Falls Heart if you ever want to listen to the original. It's, it's quite a trip. Yeah, that's Cornelia really Gray. Yeah. Yeah, of course, with uh, Gary Dredden. It's a B flat, starts on the B flat, but it's an E flat. Here's a tune, um, it's written in, I don't know, mid 1880s by a fellow named Ben Hanby. He was a uh, graduate of the University of Ohio and uh, was an advocate for uh, um, the freeing of slaves. And he was a poet. And he wrote a wonderful poem about a scandal that had just happened between a slave owner and uh, uh, a couple that was living on his plantation. And it's an amazing poem. And I can't remember what it's called exactly. But you can go home and look it up if you just look up the name Ben, ben Hanby. It's, a, it's an incredible poem. It's really long. And in the early teens, in Tin Pan Alley, and I don't know if you all know what Tin Pan Alley is or was, but it was a, um, a few blocks in Lower East Manhattan in New York, where the bulk of the United States publishing, music publishing, came from. St. Louis was a big city for music publishing. Chicago was a big city. And New York was huge. And there was this like four block radius in Manhattan where like everything was published, you know, like Happy Birthday was published in, in Tin Pan Alley, things like that. And uh, yeah, and some writer, people, it was crazy. People were paid to, they still are in Nashville. People are paid to do this. They're just like paid to sit in cubicles and write lyrics, and sometimes they blow up into big hits. Like, what's that modern band? Uh, um, Midland? Do you all know that band? It's a country band. Their famous song, I can't remember what it's called, but it was written by a guy that just worked in an office in Nashville and wrote songs for a living. It's hilarious. But that the same thing happened in the early teens in New York. People just sat and wrote lyrics. And typically what happened were people wrote amazing, beautiful melodies and somebody that wanted to make it into a pop song hired one of these songwriters to just write cheesy lyrics to the pop song. But occasionally someone would write a poem and a, a poem would be big in pop culture and someone would put lyrics to it. And I typically tend to prefer those tunes. I think probably Dana would say the same. I'm not fully positive, but to speak for myself, I prefer the tunes where the lyrics were written and somebody decided to write a melody to it. Or if the melody was written and someone decided to write lyrics that are really cheesy, I just play it instrumentally because the cheesy lyrics aren't super great. But this one's great. And what ended up happening is uh, it became really popular in the jazz world and in the pop music world in the 20s and early teens. And another cool fact about trad music, traditional jazz music, is most traditional jazz songs that you hear, you're just hearing the chorus, and which is typically a 32-bar song. But there's a whole verse of the song which comes before the chorus, right? The chorus is like the middle. And I like to look at it as like an iceberg. Like it, Most people that play trad jazz just play the chorus, and there's this whole other beautiful part of the song that most people don't learn. And uh, this song has a bunch of verses, and they're really intense because they're the poem. And um, we don't sing those because they're just really controversial and uh, really emotional lyrics, and I don't think I ha have the right to sing them. But the chorus of the song became like a jazz standard because without you knowing what the song's about, it just sounds like a love song. 
But uh, if you're interested in knowing the depths of the song's history, just go home and type into Google Ben Hanby, and you'll read an incredible poem. You'll, re you'll, you'll find the rest of the iceberg of this song that we're about to play you. Pleasant, jaunty tune. I should go home and read the poem. <laughs> what if we did that festival waltz? Okay. Festival waltz. Here's a uh, a waltz that was written by Bill Monroe's fiddle player. What's his name? Finn. Finn. Finny Finn, yes, thank you. <laughs> Kenny Baker. <laughs> Kenny Baker. Oh, we'll play it two forms through. First ending is there, second ending is there. Cool, got it? Right. One, two, three, one, two. Three. <laughs>
that's a song. <laughs> for sure, that's a song. We did have a joke. Oh, I can say though um, that this is a nice tribute to John's uh, recent celebration of legalizing. Oh yeah, I'm sitting so far back from the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> um, legalizing cannabis in Canada. It's really wonderful. And actually, um, uh, my my project that I was with before. Um, the border closing sort of separated all of the band members. Um, we were called Queen Cake, and we had this this theoretical side project in which we would only have, or we would we had this band in which we would only have one uh, gig a year, and it would be on April twentieth, and we would call ourselves the Hen House Hot Box, and uh, and we would play somewhere only once a year. <laughs> you could only book us for very non lucrative. Uh, business endeavor, but it really highlighted our enthusiasm toward uh, cannabis, for sure. And uh, a lot of old jazz standards are um, about weed, and this is one of them. Yeah. Sure. Should we play Katushka after? Oh yeah. We're gonna play two more songs for you.
Thanks, y'all. So we're gonna play one more tune and we're gonna invite Finn to play it with us. This is a, a Russian tune called Katushka. Um, it's apparently very popular in Russia because every person that we've played it around that is vaguely maybe like ate a beat once knows the words <laughs> to it. <laughs> they're just like, they're like, oh, Katushka. And we learned it from a friend of ours uh, named Ryan, who's an accordion player in Victoria. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's really wonderful how, how many folks we've met that have been like, that's the tune. And we're like, yeah, it is. It's really great. Do you want to start off with Just Fiddles? up the melody to this because okay. I'm combining it with the other tune that we just I know, every time. <laughs> okay, there's two songs that we play that are like literally the exact same beginning and every time I can't, I look at Dana I'm just like <laughs> How does it go? Do you want me to start up and y'all can play? How about that? Okay, okay. <laughs>
We have been the Salty Lemon String Band and you. Thank you so much for listening, for being here. Have a good night.